have to put a required field validator because it knows from the model that this applies. And we end up with something that's only, what, 85 lines. So we went down from 210 to 85. And this is really a case, you know, there is no scaffolding per se, there is no routing. This is something you can use without having to go all the way into dynamic data. You can take existing pages and make them quite a bit simpler using this technology. So I don't want to uh, spend much more time on that, but let's, I'm sorry, this was, right, this was the demo, sorry. How to sync with the slides. So now I want to show you some very, very cool things relating to using this technology in the cloud. So the idea is we just want to be able to write simple entity classes instead of having to deal with uh, real databases and link to SQL or entity framework. We just want to write classes and have them somehow turn into things that are stored in the cloud. And using the domain service, we can have a very nice model that's both simple and powerful to do this. Under the cover, this is relying on uh, Azure table stores, table storage, uh, which are you know, their concept of tables, but they are quite different from what you usually think of as table in the database world, because a table in Azure is simply defined by saying, yes, I want to create a table named foo. You never tell it any kind of schema. They use what we call flexible entities, where any row in the table is an arbitrary bag of name value pairs. And this is what makes the model uh, so simple. And the point here is I'm going to show you a demo that uh, uses dynamic data over that, but I could just as easily write simple uh, ASP.NET pages like I did early on that would also use that. So the model now is, this is again pretty much the same diagram I've showed you, except now the bottom box, instead of being entity framework or link to SQL, is uh, the Azure cloud. How are we doing on time? 26 minutes. So this is the last project. Yes. So this is an app, again, what could be a, a, an empty project template to work with the cloud. Actually, it's not completely empty. There's one thing I'll show you first, that in web.config, I do have some uh, configuration that tells it to use my uh, storage account. So this is my real cloud storage account. Uh, in fact, this is like the secret value, which you can only see the first half <laughs> by design. Uh, so what are we going to do here? So earlier on, the first step was to import a database, and then we would create an entity framework model over it. Now we'll directly go and create a model. And let's add a new class. And let's call it makes attendee. Trying to make it live and interesting. So initially, it's just a completely simple class. And what I'll do here is I'll extend something that may look slightly funky at first, because it looks like there's some bizarre recursion going on. But bear with me on that. So this is a slightly strange declaration that allows everything to work later, so what I have here is that class in which I can just write properties. That's the way you should look at it. And I'm just going to add a property, for instance, uh, let's go with a name. Let's add some Boolean. Let's see, having fun. And let's do another one. Date, time, date, leaving. So this is basically the closest thing I'm doing to creating a database. I'm just writing a class. So now that we have that, we're moving on to creating a domain service over that. And in this case, I'll just do it completely from scratch. Let's call it, again, catalog. Seems to be the common name for those things. And what's interesting is that now, since we're in a very simple world, I don't need the support of a fancy uh, base class like we had with Entity Framework. I'm directly going to extend domain service. In here, all I need to do is write my CRUD method. So I'll start 
with the select method, which I want to return an iCrawable of mix dandy, and we'll call it the obvious. So where it gets really nice is how I implement this method. All I need to do is say return mix attendee dot query. And that's sort of what we got by using this slightly funky base type declaration is that we have those static things on it that make uh, certain operations very easy. And likewise, I'm going to write a select method. Uh, I'm sorry, an update method. Update, um, oops, why do we class? I'll take in, what am I doing wrong here? I'm not inside, oh, thank you. Yes. Okay, and the way I implement this, again, is completely trivial. I'm being passed this attendee object, and I want to save it to the store. The way I do it is as simple as calling attendee.save. And along the same line, I'm going to write a method to insert new attendees, and the implementation is the same. This also says the save method works both with a new entity or an existing entity that you're updating. It's really taking the data API to the simplest possible level. And once I have that, since I'm going to be using dynamic data, I do need to do the little one-liner in here that registers my domain service. Let me maximize this again. And we'll do our catalog thing. And let's run it and see what happens. So obviously this demo requires a, a live connection to the Azure store and hopefully I, I do have a, a connection that I can rely on. So the, the first part, it found that there was only this one table exposed. Uh, there are no entries at first, but it does give me the ability to add one. And I can say, okay, Joe, having fun, leaving, not for a while, insert. And boom, we have this entry here. Now. Let's add another one. Bill, not having fun, already gone. Let's just add three just to make it more interesting. Uh, automatically, I get this filtering like we had seen earlier in the dynamic data demo. So you're probably wondering, like, where is that data? And as I told you earlier, this is in the, uh, the Azure table store, and I have a tool which can show that. Where is that tool? This guy here. And this is my store, and it shows me the list of tables that I have. All of those things are just random test tables. And there's a new one that just appeared called Mix Attendee. And then it doesn't respond. have to kill it and try again, but well, in any event, you see the data on the screen.